I'm King Link, and today I'd like to do a site review of a website called UHS Hints, and I will. But the thing is, I don't think we're ready for the actual site just yet. To fully appreciate what UHS Hints is, I feel like we have to start with what makes a great puzzle in a game, especially when it's an adventure game or a puzzle game, and also what came before that point. Today we have a lot of games that have puzzles with quotation marks, which amount to either figuring out where to go next, or clicking the right button the right number of times. Those are puzzles of course, but not what we're going to be talking about today. Puzzle games and old school point and click adventure games were something different and something more interesting to me at least. Both genres still exist, but it feels like they're a shrinking category of games. Luckily, there are still a few good choices like Portal 2. The Portal series is a fantastic puzzle game, but I want to point out a couple of things about how it builds a challenge. Let's take a quick look at a room and see what we have here. This is an early level, but the player reaches a room and has access to a couple of objects. Portal's great skill is giving players the right amount of pieces to solve a puzzle, and yet still provides some level of discovery or analysis in that process. This is both good and bad. Portal limits each room's problem space by limiting what's in a room, so there's a focus on what players can reach. However, it also subtly says anything that the player can reach is probably a key to the official way to solve each puzzle. That being said, I rather like Portal's approach because it does three things very well. It limits the player to only what is necessary, it teaches the player a new approach or understanding and reinforces what's going to be important, and it builds up impressive and large problems without requiring the player to do too many repetitive actions. But the Portal series is good at teaching the player, and I dare say most people can beat Portal without really referring to a guide or assistance for the most part. If every puzzle game was like Portal, we wouldn't need hints, guides, walkthroughs, and puzzle games would be amazing all the time. Sadly, that's not the case, nor is Portal the type of the game that UHS Hints is made for. No, we're going to have to go farther back. The Secret of Monkey Island. Oh boy, Guybrush Threepboard is awesome. This is a classic point and click game and it's a perfect example of, well, not exactly how not to do puzzles, but at least how the very best puzzles were designed in the 90s. There's a lot of pieces of The Secret of Monkey's Island that can be a little bit annoying by today's standards. There are a few pixel hunting puzzles, such as knowing you can take this pot. There's at least one dialogue heavy puzzle that players should hate, Players will also have to pick up entirely too many objects and have to guess how each one will be used. However, it doesn't have much moon logic, and for that I heavily applaud Monkey's Island. Honestly, it's a great game. However, old adventure games tend to be much more about giving players all the items at once, or all the locations at once, and letting them slowly use them or puzzle through them in multiple different puzzles available at the same time. The problem space is much larger, and honestly there's entirely too many options that players are eventually going to be overwhelmed. So this style of puzzle is different and will be quite a bit harder. For instance, how to get this fish can be a hard puzzle to figure out. In fact, it actually stumped me when I was replaying the game for this video. So in 2020, there's a lot of ways to solve it. But back in the 90s, people were limited. The internet wasn't really a big thing, so there were hint lines that the developers or publishers ran with a toll, or maybe hint books that were used. But as the internet was ramping up, Game FAQs became a website in 1995 and started just giving away solutions for a ton of games. Walkthroughs were a major part of the site and people could just look up any solution. But the thing is, looking up a solution to a puzzle game isn't very rewarding. Since the puzzles were key to the gameplay, this would be akin to a button that would just kill any enemy in a video game. Very useful for debugging, but it could break the enjoyment of the game. If you used to walk through, many of the classic puzzle games fell apart, but these games could still be challenging. Sierra especially had a lot of games that would stump people, and while the idea is people would work out the puzzles themselves or discuss it with friends, in the late 90s, we were far more connected than when these games were originally being made. Not nearly as much as today, of course, but people wanted a way to get a hit. We're seeing here King's Quest VII, which came out in 1994, right around the time the internet was becoming a major thing. I just want to take a moment and appreciate the 640x480 display here. Oh, VGA. So good. The height of graphical fidelity. It doesn't even require windows. Anyways, in 1995, you can now log on to a website known as Game FAQs and instantly get this 17 kilobyte document that tells you every action you will need to do to beat the game. But as I said, this is not a very rewarding experience as you completely ruin the game when you do this. There had to be a better way. And in 1998, that way arrived. 
and now is the perfect time to look at UHS hints. So UHS stands for Universal Hint System, and I'm sure some people will think this is just another walkthrough site, but it's not. UHS Hints instead tries to help the player to figure out puzzles without giving them step-by-step -step instructions, if possible. There's a ton of clever hyperlink connections inside the hint guides themselves, so if you need the solution to another puzzle to do something, it can link you to the correct puzzle to try to figure that one out. The goal is for players to actually understand the puzzle rather than just being given a solution, so that's actually a better way to do this. Let's take a quick look at King's Quest 7's guide, and you can see the guide is broken up by chapters and then sections of that chapter. So if you want to find out something about that pool of water, here's the hint, and the further you explore those hints, the more clear the solution will be made. If you need the solution to the fish puzzle in Monkey's Island, you can quickly make your way there with minimal information spoiled. Even as you click through, you get multiple attempts to solve the puzzle with subtle hints before the site will just flat out explain how to do something. And the fact is, having a well-written hint guide is a much stronger experience than getting the solution to a puzzle, and it definitely helps. So what really happened with this? The fact is, UHS Hints is still around, kind of. We can click through the years and find that there hasn't been a new guide in about five years. Even the guides at the time were kind of like Nancy Drew games, Skyrim. I mean, sure, I guess those could work. The Blackwell games have a game hint system, I believe, in them, but they definitely deserve a guide as well. Yet, something really changed. Well, for one thing, this site feels ancient. It really hasn't kept up with the times, and that could be a thing that there's not a million ads on it to get a single solution, but the way the creators wanted to make money off of the site definitely hasn't worked. You can even see a lot of the site is quite a bit dated, this line especially. UHS Hints app runs on Windows, Palm OS, or Mac OS. Wow, I mean, sometimes I don't have internet, so I need that offline knowledge. There is another point in the site that they mentioned the Amiga as well. It's been made clear to me, though, that Palm OS might need a short explanation. That was the OS for the Palm Pilot, and Palm Pilots were, well, think Blackberries without an internet connection, which also probably needs an explanation. Blackberries were iPhones that had no apps, were made for boring business people, and generally kind of sucked. But they had physical keyboards. Really, UHS bet on the wrong horse that offline viewing would make the most money and hasn't changed that bet since. In early 2000, having an offline reader sounds good, and maybe that would have been a great way to monetize the site. However, I can just call out to my Google Home right now, and about half the time, it will give me a specific answer for some weird video game question I have. I also tend to have my phone on me, so I think clearly this is the wrong long-term play. There are also two rather important problems with UHS outside of their control. How games have been made have changed over the years. Portal 2 is a great example of a game that was made right and doesn't really need a guide. But even there, there is a guide for Portal 2 on the site. Instead, it's puzzle games just stop being made in the same way, at least the style of puzzle games that people would use hints or guides for. Games are made a bit easier today and the number of classic adventure or puzzle games, even like Portal 2, is shrinking. I love Baba is You, mostly because it's one of the scant few games that made me think harder than putting the red object on the red pillar. Baba is You is wonderful, but it's one of the few games out there like it. The other problem, really the big problem, is that there is more competition than ever for this space. As I said, it's 2020. If people struggle with the game, Google will usually give you a quick answer. Even if it somehow doesn't, watching a video is quicker and usually faster. On the other hand, message boards exist and Google farms that data for faster answers and you see you can find an answer even with a small number of hints. Of course, this doesn't even mention that some platforms have options for hints in the game itself. Steam especially has a button that allows you to pull up a guide immediately. You can also go into Steam discussion groups and usually get solid, mostly spoiler-free information while still in the game. In 2020, the fact is UHS Hints is a relic of a long gone era. And honestly, that's a shame. But I think there is something of value in this ancient site. It's something a lot of people tend to ignore. It's the value of how we assist each other with games. The core idea of what a hint is in a game. What's said and how it's said is far more important than just getting a solution. Monkey's Island Hint doesn't tell me how to get the fish. It tries to get me to try different things before spelling out how to get that fish. It allows players to enjoy the experience. That's not fully gone, of course. Fans actually do that often. Talos Principle, an excellent puzzle game, has a guide written exactly in this format, giving hints before spoilers, and that shows the care and extra steps that writer has taken. Kudos to him. 
and that same style is also available in some Baba's U guides, including the absolutely excellent Key of W guide, which should be checked out if you play that game. Though, the number of unfinished guides on Steam that use that same system show the one problem with this approach, due to how long it takes a writer to come up with those hints, but it also helps to preserve the great parts of the game underneath. Games themselves can also do this. Thimbleweed Park has a progressive hint system where players get smaller hints as they build up to the bigger pieces. This mostly works, and it's great that a game will also tell you when a puzzle that you're stuck on might not be a puzzle you can solve just yet. Hmm. Thimbleweed Park. Wait, that's actually made by Ron Gilbert, who also made Monkey's Island and a ton of these adventure games. Ah, an important connection. It's almost like I chose those games specifically because of it. I honestly hope Thimbleweed Park is a sign we're going to see more and better hint systems in games. It just helps players feel smart without stealing the experience from them. If you ever see someone asking for assistance online, maybe consider what Portal 2 does. Rather than trying to solve the entire puzzle for them, just give them a couple of hints. Maybe even start them off with a limited puzzle space, either dealing with which items are necessary for the puzzle, or which area of the game that they should have explored before solving that specific puzzle. Who knows, it might make them enjoy the game even more when they solve it themselves. So that's what I have for UHS Hints. I'm honestly a huge fan of this site. I played a lot of adventure games in my time, and I love the idea of progressive hint systems. I'm also glad to look at a site I used to be a huge fan of and share it with all of you. Out of curiosity, any of you familiar with UHS Hints before this video, or is there a particularly amazing hint guide that has stuck with you far longer than the game itself has? I name dropped every game that I used in this video except for one, let me fix that right now. That is Telltale's game Sam and Max Season 1, so if you were confused about that dog and rabbit that you may have seen, that's what it was. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it so I know you want to see more site reviews. Subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't already. I'm going to be popping up two videos here, one I recently did on Rhythm Games from last month, and my site review of Congregate from last year. Until then... I'm King Link, and thank you for watching.